Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. I'm Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Josh Andrew Sano. He's a missionary. He spoke last week, and he'll be sharing his story again. Welcome, Josh. Thanks. Um, Josh, last week you shared about your testimony and of your conversion, and now you've become a missionary. Would you like to tell us a bit about the missionary work you're involved in? Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm involved with Youth Mission Team Australia. Um, so um, we're just an organization that uh, will go into to schools and, you know, host retreats and stuff um, for parishes. Um, so, you know, Monday and Tuesday, we just find regular work throughout the community, whether it be an administration job or gardening or working at McDonald's, pretty much just whatever we can find so that on Wednesday through Sunday we can um, just travel around the Melbourne area specifically. There's four national teams. Um, we're the Melbourne one. There's Perth, uh, Wollongong, and Sydney. Those are the other three. Um, and yeah, we just um, put on retreats for, for youth, um, primarily, you know, 7th to 12th year. Yeah, so uh, what would you say is your, the, the aim of the uh, organization? being mm. a missionary? Well, um, I know our, the slogan is spread hope to young Australians, and so I'd say we pretty much live up to that. Um, what I just really get out of it is, um, you know, going into schools, um, you know, of, you know, all the, seeing these kids who, um, just in the generation that we're in and the culture that we live in, they really don't have the opportunity to think about the, you know, the bigger questions or really ask themselves, you know, where's my relationship with God? And I think we really give them the opportunity in that day, you know, to um, just really sort of refocus and um, sort of have a, a personal, you know, um, just just a personal conversation with God and really ask them, you know, um, you know, who, who are you in my life? Wow. And what does the day consist of when you when you um, go to mission? Mm, yeah, it's just, um, you know, we, we, we play games and we do a lot of skits. Some are, you know, funny. Some are sort of serious, and uh, give personal testimonies, very similar to the one that I gave. And um, I have uh, five other team team members, so two guys and uh, three girls. And so, you know, they all give their their talks as well, and um, sort of going along the themes of just self image. You know, just really coming to to love yourself and love others. And then uh, we also run like a leadership camp as well just how to be, a, you know, a young leader. Yeah, and how do you find that the youth are responding to, to this? Mm, I mean, uh, nine times out of ten, it's, it's, um, it's wonderful. I mean, you know, the kids, they just, they, I th I'd say um, they're definitely very responsive to youth, um, you know, ministering to youth. And so, you know, they always are very attentive to our stories and they really respect, you know, our journeys. Um, you know, and there's definitely been like a few times where we've just gone into some rough schools where I think it was just peer pressure, you know, they just were so scared of what the classmate next to them was going to think, you know, if they mm. were to, you know, participate. And it was really sad to see just because there was just like one school in particular, I remember it was just, it was just the air there that they just were so afraid of, um, you know, what others thought about them that um, it really stopped them from you know, participating and actually, you know, questioning, you know, for themselves, you know, where they are at with mm. God. But primarily, we get really good responses. <laughs> yes. And uh, do you, how do you know how effective, how do you all know you're effective, you know, when you go for a mission and, you know, do you have a way of getting feedback from the young people? Oh, yeah. We have, um, at the end of every ministry day, we have like react cards where, you know, they can give us feedback and, and what they liked, what they didn't like. And if, you know, it, it you know, um, grew or helped their relationship with God. Um, and so that's one way. And then we also have, you know, um, retreats that we host that um, we actually, like, we had our first one for the year. And we had, like, five or six, maybe even a few more people that we met on ministry days from different schools who just found out about our camp because we promoted it, you know, while at their school and they came. And we have, like, a weekly youth group that a lot of those kids there came from, being a part of a you know a ministry day at their school. Mm. Yeah. So um, I suppose could you off the cuff remember any of the 
feedback, the words they've said, obviously you, for confidential, you can't say their names, but you can yeah. remember some people who've shared before and after. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, I mean, the best ones are just when people say that they're not really sure they believe in God. And then, you know, after hearing our, our testimonies and everything, they, you know, they'll put on there, you know, this really, you know, made me have to question internally, you know, if, if God exists. And I think I'm going to start, you know, a dialogue with trying to really find, find God. And you know, that's, that's always, that's like the best one. And we get a few of those. Mm. And then there's also just, you know, I'm going through a lot of struggles. And this just really helped me realize that I can turn to God. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of beautiful kids that we, that we meet. That's fantastic because, I mean, even if you can get them more open because there's been, you know, quite a lot of, um, I suppose, bad press about mm. Christianity, the Catholic Church and all those sort of things. Yeah. So it's great if they can be more open. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. And in your work in the ministry, you also um, share houses, like live in community. Yeah. Um, we have uh, just a brother household and a, and a sisterhood household. So that's why um, we work on Monday and Tuesday to really pay for the house and, and pay for, you know, all the transportation throughout the year. Mm. But that's, that's great. And that's really helped with personal prayer life as well. Just having two guys who are on the same exact journey, you know, where we, you know, make sure that we're getting up in the morning to pray and make sure that we're saying night prayer at night. You know, it's um, yes. really helpful. So it'd be a challenging, like, because you're not very, I mean, you're not that many years older than the kids at school, I mean, young people at school. So uh, do you find it challenging to, to live this lifestyle compared to being at school and uni? And um, you know, I, personally, I, I don't. I, I find it really helpful. I think just YMT, I have so much respect for um, Youth Mission Team Australia. I, I said that's what it stands for. Um, I have so much respect for, you know, the guidelines and the lifestyle they set up for us because they just really make sure that, um, you know, we are personally in a good place. And they even say, you know, like, if you're not in a good place personally, then, you know, you're not going to really be effective in ministry. So we're always very serious about personal prayer. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, we need to go for a break now, but it's inspiring to hear about the youth mission team. Thanks. You're watching Spirit of Life. And we'll be back in a few minutes. Hello. Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, and my guest is Josh Angry Sano. He's a missionary, and he's been sharing his faith story. Welcome back. Thanks. And I, I know you've been a missionary, but also you, you're a youth and young adult, and many um, adults and many people are always, and youth are wondering about how you reach youth, you know, as, with so many questions, because today's youth have questions on how is God relevant? Mm. Could you answer that? How is God relevant to youth in the social media and drugs and so many things out there? Yeah, um, I'd say, um, you know, the greatest way to, to minister um, to them would just be an authentic witness to, you know, your own faith. And um, I think with everything going on, you know, just so many distractions just with social media and you know, just where we are politically and, um, you know, just with, you know, alcohol and, and um, drug abuse just being such a big thing. I think many people will sort of write off Christians as the hypocritical ones who, who don't love and just judge, which um, is really sad because I don't think that's the case at all. Like, just from personal experience, um, I think, you know, uh, we're one of the, some of the most loving, most accepting people out there. And so um, I think just really... Um, just, you know, really making sure that every single person knows that, you know, um, you know, we're not called to, to judge you. Uh, we're just called to, to love you where you're at and to, and to spread the truth um, and just to spread the truth just by, by being authentic. Like I said, just being an authentic witness mm. to faith. And um, so, yeah, I think that's, mm, I think that's, that's the, um, great. you know, how God can, can be relevant. Yeah. And what about a youth who says, look, I can get instant gratification from drugs, 
sex, or you know, for one of a better word, you know, the lifestyle of you know, s- social media, all the yeah. instant gratification things. What, what, how, how would you compare that to Christianity? If a youth asked you, mm. I mean, I'd say that that life is s- just the biggest lie, like in our in our culture at the moment. You know, it's just it's so glorified in television and in music and in media that you know. Uh, it's almost like just like the just the um, just sell, you know partying and going out is you know the new thing to do and you know if you don't go out on the weekends then you know you didn't have a good weekend but you know I've learned from personal experience and I think many people will have that um, those things uh, end up leading you in pretty much the exact opposite direction you mm-hmm. you know the um, just you know drugs alcohol um, just addictions to anything anything could be an addiction. Mm-hmm just leads to ruin and it leads to depression and emptiness. And I think yes. that the Christian faith can really offer, um, you know, something that can fill that void mm. in all of our lives. Yes, and you speak from experience because you went that, down that track. Maybe you can share for those audiences who haven't heard your story a little bit about your background. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, so, you know, I grew up in uh, a very Catholic home, but... From America too, isn't yes, it? Yes, from America. Yeah, I just, I'm just here this year for... Um, for youth mission team, um, but um, you know, getting to college was sort of the first time in my life I got to decide whether I was going to continue the faith, and just for a while, um, uh, I just sort of gave into that that lie of you know our society today, and I tried to find you know fulfillment through you know drugs and alcohol, and through you know women, and through um, just sort of my personal hobbies, and. Um, I'd say that um, I just really found that, you know, yeah, those might be good on certain occasions, but none of those are consistent sources of of peace and of, of happiness. And every single thing, you know, um, is going to fail you at some point, except for God. And, um, and you know, when it comes to, you know, drugs and alcohol and just addictions in general, um, you know, I think the definition of an addiction is just something that steals away your happiness. And, you know, we're called to um, just do great things in our lifetime. And I think once we're just really uh, chained to that addiction, um, you know, we're really tied down and we're not able to be completely happy because, um, you know, at first it it starts off as like, oh, this is my personal choice, but then it sort of becomes I'm enslaved to this choice. Like I have to do this or else I won't be able to, you know, get up and enjoy myself. And Mm. um, yeah. That's interesting. How did you find getting off the drugs like did you when you stopped did you have this urge to take more drugs or you just found suddenly that feeling just went um i mean i really had to make the decision to surround myself with people who are going to uplift me and um you know not not tempt me back into that lifestyle because um it really is impossible if you try to do it alone or if you're still with people who you know are not going to help you with that walk but um uh you know I th- it was it was a little hard at first um but you know they, luckily I didn't really get into any addiction that was like physically serious to where you know I'd have mm-hmm. you know really serious withdrawals yes. um so I think it was most importantly just um you know really making sure I'm around people who are going to build me up every day yes. and leading on prayer instead of other things. And you also uh, started giving off yourself. You went overseas. Yes. Um, you know, I went to... Um, to serve. To yeah, yeah, the mission trip in, in Peru that um, my dad sort of made sure I, I, I got I got on and, and sent me there, but I was really fortunate. And definitely just to see how other people live and sort of get outside of your box and realize, like, okay, you know, there's so much more to this life and there's so many other people and there's so much work to be done that it really, I'm really not doing myself or God justice by just sitting here in my own addictions. Mm. Yeah, and what what would you say about your experience of God to young people, you know, compared to adults or older people saying, you know, go to church, go, you know, follow God. How would you speak to a young person about God? Mm. I mean, um, I'd say that, you know, God is, you know, just um, a very loving father, very forgiving, and then also your best friend. And I think just 100% trusting in him, you just trust that he'll lead you into places that will really bring you happiness here on earth. 
Mm, that's fantastic. And yeah. and you also had a good role model of your own father. Yes, yeah, my dad is definitely um, sort of the greatest uh, representation I have on earth of what, you know, my relationship with God the Father, Yes. I, I think will be, or is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we need to go for a break now. Okay. You, you're watching Spirit of Life. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Spirit of Life. I'm Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Josh Angry Sano. He's a missionary and he's been sharing his faith story and his ministry of God's work. Josh, um, I'd like to know more about what you were saying that your dad helped you to have a good understanding of God the Father, is that correct? Yeah, um, I think just especially while I um, was sort of, you know, struggling and not really living out the life that God calls me to or, you know, my own, you know, earthly father. Um, just sort of the the uh, the love that he showed me anyways and mm. just how, um, you know, he just never, never really turned his back, never really rejected me. He just, you know, just forgave me at, at every single offense, at every single, um, you know, mistake and he loved me through it and I think, you know, he, by the end of it, even though I was sort of sometimes still following, you know, in a direction he didn't want me to go. I think eventually uh, it was just like, you know, man, my, you know, my dad is, has off, uh, given up so much for me and he's like, you know, really had my back so much that I have to, you know, I have to turn my life around, if not for myself, but for him. So you, you, you could, he could have been really angry or hurt you because you, you ended up at one stage almost with handcuffs. So that yeah. would have been quite a shock to your dad. Yeah. And yet he was still giving you love. and Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Just, um, yeah, I mean, like, just, you know, the greatest situations, you know, when I got in trouble with school and even when I got in trouble with the law, how, um, you know, he just still got me out of it, sometimes with his own money. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't cheap, especially the one, you know, in handcuffs. That was not a cheap mistake, but, um, you know, he just fully paid it and um, I just think that's very Christ-like just you know he paid for my mistakes and then knowing that I'm probably not going to be able to really fully pay him back. So you really experienced mercy from your dad and mercy from God? Definitely. And and you didn't really feel you deserved this? Uh, no I definitely didn't <laughs> but yeah. um, you know I guess that's just what love is you know. Mm, that's fantastic. I suppose that because you represent youth would, what would you say, because there's a lot of youth or, and society who are disenchanted with, you know, priests and religious who, who've, you know, been in ped pedophilia. What would you say to young people about that? Mm -hmm. I think um, the way I personally view it is, um, you know, you know, God gave us such a beautiful and perfect thing, which is, you know, our, our faith, uh, you know, the church, um, but he gave it to humans. And we're, you know, very imperfect. And, um, you know, I know that um, there was a speaker who, I th she was, she was a, like a Protestant um, author. And, you know, um, my grandma was telling me, cause she read this person's book and she went to like a book signing. And uh, the lady was talking to these other women. They're like, oh yeah, like we really like your writings. You know, we left the Catholic Church because of all the scandal going on and everything. And the author uh, just like looked at them and was like, if you're gonna leave, a faith because of you know a scandal and you're never really actually going to have faith because humans are going to mess up and you can't let you know what a human uh, you know a human action define you know your faith with a divine you know with, with our divine God. Yeah because um, most people who turn to God see all mercy all love and and yeah his I suppose what you're saying is his followers can mark up. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes even his followers may not be his true followers because, you know, there was a time in so was the Catholic Church, from my knowledge, that um, where people had to become priests. I mean, I think in certain countries like Ireland where the first son had to be a priest. I'm not saying that they're pedophiles or anything like that, but yeah. but there are people who join the uh, 
a priesthood with not, um, you know, just right for tradition. Yeah. yeah, I mean, no, we've definitely come a long way. And, um, you know, I think even JP2 really apologized for, um, you know, JP2, he, he made just a note to apologize for the Crusades and to apologize for the wrongdoings of the church. And I feel like the Catholic Church has never tried to say that we didn't do wrong. I think that we've fully admitted it. And, um, and you know, it it's really is a shame that the media sort of tries to focus on the negative side of things um, for such a beautiful and redemptive um, you know, group of people. Yeah, that's fantastic to hear it from your point of view. And, um, and also with the marriage breakdown, you know, that a lot of young people's parents might have had one's faith. And it's sort of, with all the marriage breakdown, do you think that also affects the young people's faith in God through the marriage breakdown? Yeah, I mean, just looking at how, um, you know, amazing, you know, amazingly lucky I was to have such great parents. Um, I just think, you know, whenever you see somebody who has parents divorce or something, just the the struggles that they go through that I can't really um, personally, ex um, you know, sort of uh, attest to, but um, I can understand it, you know. Mm. I suppose forgiveness would be a big part, isn't it? With your parents haven't been good examples of faith to forgive them and to, as you said, to focus on Jesus mm. rather than the parents. And I hear that you also have developed gifts of um, arts in the arts of um, rapping and mm. yeah. Yeah, no, I um, started off as sort of like a prayer, personal prayer, but um, I just, I love hip hop and I think that, um, you know, it's one of the most influential genres of my generation. Yes. And um, yeah. yeah, because I, I want them to hear the audience about your rap. Could you please um, share one of your raps to youth? Yes, uh, of course. Um, I'll just jump right into it. Um, I gotta say this, you were made for greatness. You were made to reach the moon and stars, so don't get lost in shoes and cars and scars and minus setbacks. Don't get stressed on drawbacks, comebacks and price tags, government tax and iPads. So many distractions, we might have become one. Holding back a culture in need of a revolution. I doubt that you gonna do something. Step up beside my shoe, son. I'll sprint the race that you run. Sing louder than you sung. I got some dreams greater than you think I'ma take it. I'm all in it now. No more this faking and waiting. I'm losing impatience. I'm chasing my favorite. My background is basic. My heart is amazing. And since the days of the caveman, the sun and the rain came in. Shine down on the pavement. It will tomorrow for my kids' generation. Maybe not at this rate we're in, so every day I'm savoring and fighting for a better life where love wins and hate is dead. That's yeah. just like a small piece. I sort of, like, I kind of got a little nervous and I fell off no, a little no, bit. That's <laughs> no, that's fantastic. It's a great way, isn't it, of bringing the gospel message through rap, and it's, it really connects them. Um, and uh, you've been very inspiring during this um, interview. And Thanks. I wish you all the best with your missionary work. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Thank you for joining our program. Stay tuned next week. Goodbye and God bless you.